الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد يعطيه مجن رحمه الله تعالى باب قول هلك الناس باب قول هلك الناس the chapter with regards to the statement هلك الناس the people have been destroyed meaning the prohibition of this statement that it's not allowed and what is intended here هلك الناس is that a person he will look to the corruption and the society and the disobedience that is occurring and then he will make a general statement and he will say all of mankind is misguided the people have gone astray everyone is upon mis- is upon disobedience there's no the, the 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 people of faith are gone the people are destroyed all of them are foul uh, the the entire society is completely corrupted like this and to have a blanket statement like this indicating that there's no good left whatsoever indicating that there is no good left whatsoever meaning the prohibition of that meaning the, the prohibition of that and Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu marfu'ah idha qala ar-rajulu halak an-nas fa huwa ahlakuhum rahu muslimun so the author he mentioned the narration of Abi Hurairah radiyallahu anhu that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said idha qala ar-rajul if a man if a man he says if a man he says what what is intended yani a person shakhsun if a person he says halak an-nas all of mankind has been destroyed. This is with regards to religion. This is, with, this is with regards to deen. All of the people are destroyed. All of mankind has been destroyed. Everyone is misguided. Mankind is, is misguided. All of the people are, have gone astray. Like this, the people are corrupted, all of them. And this all has the same meaning. And he is the most severe with regards to that. Meaning he is the most severe with regards to that. This is narrated by Adiman Muslim. It has come like this, فَهُوَ أَهْلَكُهُمْ يعني with uh, uh, الرفع فَهُوَ أَهْلَكُهُمْ meaning it's the khabr. It's the khabr here, أَهْلَكُهُمْ Then he is the most destroyed of them. يعني أشدهم, أهل, uh, أَشَدَّهُمْ هَلَكًا He is the most severe in destruction from them. And he is the one who is most destroyed. And he is the one who is most misguided. And he is the one who is most, uh, or the, the furthest astray from them. Or the one who is in the, 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 the most severe of misguidance. And this is the meaning of that. Also it has come فَهُوَ أَهْلَكَهُمْ فَهُوَ أَهْلَكَهُمْ مِنْ أَهْلَكَ يُهْلِكُ As a verb فَهُوَ أَهْلَكَهُمْ Then he has destroyed them يعني جَعَلَهُمْ هَارِكِينَ يعني he, Then he is the one who has destroyed them or has considered them to be destroyed and the likes like this But uh, what is a well-known reading of this narration فَهُوَ أَهْلَكُهُمْ Although both of them have come and both readings have a, a proper understanding Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala he mentioned in his book Zal al-Ma'ad he mentioned about this statement here and he said that wa fi ma'na hadha fasad an-nas aw fasad az-zaman wa nahwuhu and he similar to this statement here halak an-nas fasad an-nas to say the people all of them are corrupted yani or to say fasad az-zaman wa nahwuhu or to say that the time has been time has been corrupted yani the, meaning the error now the, the corruption has engulfed the people has encompassed the people Yani in this manner and that which is similar to that. Or to say, for example, Dhalan Nas, and Nas Kulluhum Dullal, all of mankind is misguided. And the likes like this. So this is similar to what we see today from some of the statements of the Khawarij, from the followers of Sayyid Qutub, and the likes like this, how they have claimed that all of the societies, this the the, the Muslim countries, they're all yani, societies of Jahiliyyah. There's no Islamic authority remaining in the land. There's no Islamic government remaining in the land. And therefore, anybody who follows those governments and the likes like that, then they likewise, they're from Jahiliyyah. And they have made a blanket statement of takfir in this manner. And this is what had led them to that. So this is from those foul, foul statements. Jahiliyyah to al-Asr. And the likes like this, the Jahiliyyah of our days. Yani meaning that it has encompassed the lands. And everyone is misguided. And the, and, uh, the people have have gone away from the faith and left the tawheed and all of mankind is destroyed. All of this is not allowed. All of this is not allowed, first and foremost, because uh, the truth is that there will always remain a group who is victorious upon the, upon the truth and upon the deen of Allah. لَا تَزَالَ الطَّعِفَةُ مِنْ أُمَّتِي ظَحِرِينَ عَلَى الْحَقِّ لَا يَضُرُّهُ مِنْ خَذَّرَهُمْ وَلَا مِنْ خَالَافَهُمْ 
حتى يأتي أمر الله وهم كذلك as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned there will always remain a, a group victorious, a parent, victorious upon the truth, and yani fighting upon the truth, upon the correct way and the correct path, the correct creed and the correct, the correct belief, the correct methodology, upon the correct religion, defending that. And no harm comes to them from those who abandon them nor from those who oppose them until the command of Allah comes and they're like that. And yani establishing the religion. So the religion will always be established and there will always remain khair in the ummah until just before the end of the days. Until just before the end, the end of times. And so this is the case. There are always, alhamdulillah, remain khair in the ummah. And there always remain goodness in the ummah. But uh, the point for mentioning this here is what the author is leading up to with regards to the next chapter. The next chapter, Babul Fakhr. The chapter of pride and arrogance. The chapter of pride and arrogance. And uh, this, uh, in reality, this statement is proceeding from that aspect. It's proceeding from Fakhr. And proceeding from takabur uh, kibr and a person he would think that he's better than everybody else. So this is why it is prohibited that he would look at everybody else, and he would look at himself, and he would, in comparison to them. And whenever he compa he compares the people to himself, he'd be like, oh, these people are all misguided. These people are all lost. Mankind is is, is deficient. They're 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 weak in their faith. And in reality, he, what he's doing is he he's praising himself and glorifying himself and raising himself and the likes like this. And by saying that, looking at the people and looking down upon them and belittling them and putting a blanket statement upon them, all of them are misguided. Meaning it's like he's saying, everybody's misguided except for me and my friends. Like this, everybody is misguided, everybody is deviant, everybody is upon innovation, everybody has, uh, has left Islam and the likes like this. And this is the way of the Khawarij. And likewise, those who have a resemblance to them, those who have a resemblance to them, the Khawarij that make takfir of everybody except for their self. Everyone is a disbeliever with the takfiri except for itself. Yani and his friends, those people who agree with him. Yani and the likes like this. And this is a foul way. And likewise, some other people, uh, although maybe they do not have this issue of khawarij going against the rulers, they have the similar methodology or the similar afa or the similar misguided understanding has trickled into their, into their creed likewise until they say everyone is upon innovation except for, you know, everyone is upon innovation and everyone is misguided and the likes like this and no one is Salafi. Like, no, I'm the only Salafi, me and my friends. Everybody else is an innovator. The rest of mankind is an innovator. This country is innovators and that country is innovators and these people is innovators and that masjid is innovators. And then it's like he's saying nobody's upon the sunnah except for him and whoever he likes. So therefore it's impermissible from this aspect. From this aspect, the yani need of praising oneself and belittling others and looking down on others. And uh, likewise, uh, it's having a, a, pessimist, a pessimistic view and having bad, bad thoughts about the Ummah and the likes like this, or bad thoughts about Allah that He would leave the Ummah yani need to, to be wasted away and to be left in misguidance entirely and that there will be not any good left. And so this is a, a foul way. This is a foul way. So therefore, it's not permissible. So the one who said it like this, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَهُوَ أَهْلَكُهُمْ So this is why. The one who says, هَلَكَ nas, All of mankind is misguided. All of mankind is upon innovation. All of mankind is upon deviation. All of mankind is disbelieved. All of, all, all of mankind, their faith is weak. And their faith is deficient. Then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about him, هُوَ أَهْلَكُهُمْ He is the most deficient. He is the most weak. He is the most destroyed. And he is the one who is sharing him the most of that. Because now he has raised himself and praised himself and thought that he's better than others. So in reality, he is from the worst of them. He is from the worst of them. And this is also, وَلِيَعْذُ بِاللَّهِ From those affairs, the people of Nara, as they mentioned with regards to the principles, الْمُعَامَلَ بِنِقِيلِ قَصْدِهِ Whenever he wanted to raise himself, and this person is that and that person is this, and he wants to put everybody down and stand on their back and so that he can be high. And the likes like this. In reality, what he's doing, belittling the people in order to raise himself. Belittling the people in order to raise himself. What happens in the legislation and the law and with Allah for huwa? Ahlakuhum. He is the, he's the worst of them. He is the one, he will be the lowest of them. And this is the case. And this is the case. There's the other understanding. This is with regards to if it's for huwa ahlakuhum. This is a noun now. This is a, an ism. For huwa ahlakuhum. He is the most. Yani ism tafdil. But if it's a verb, it has another understanding. For huwa ahlakuhum. Although the, this wording here is not as uh, well known as the other wording, it has come. And it also has a meaning. Then he's the one who has destroyed them. Then he's the one who has destroyed them. Or he has considered them that, and that is not true. And therefore he has opposed the law and his command. Because the reality is that all of mankind is not misguided. Or it's understood that he has shared in misguiding them. And he has a, a hand in leading them to that. 
And this happens because likewise from this statement is uh, it will put the people in despair. And it will cause the people to give up hope if they're hearing the people saying, oh, the ummah is finished. Everyone is in jahiliyyah. There's not a Muslim ruler left. All of them have disbelieved. Disbelief has encompassed jahiliyyah, has encompassed the, 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 the world. Misguidance has encompassed the world. The sunnah is finished. And the, like, these statements like this, all of mankind is misguided. Everyone is upon falsehood. Corruption has engulfed the ummah. Like this, then the people, they're going to hear the likes of these words and they're going to give up hope. They're going, to be, they're, going to, they're going to have despair. And this could cause a person who's weak to go further in the, in the misguidance that he's upon. To go further in the misguidance that he's upon. And also we benefit from this with regards to tarbiyah. With regards to cultivating our family. And likewise the society. And teaching and the likes like this. That we don't say this to the people. If the child, he makes the mistakes, we don't tell him, oh, oh you're a loser. You can't do anything right. You don't say the words like this. It's a similar like that. For what? Yani you don't say that, that, that you don't call him like this. You don't destroy his his personality. You don't destroy his hopes. You don't you don't break him down entirely. Oh, you're a loser. You never do anything right. Which you can't understand anything. Like, words like this. Let let you check him. You correct him. But you don't belittle him and put him down and make him feel like he has no good with him whatsoever. Whether you correct him in the best way and you show him the right way and the likes like this, you tell him, you know, okay, this is wrong and the right way is to do it like this. For example, you clarify that this is not allowed or you clarify that it's not correct like this and there's a better way to do it. You show them that and you teach them that and you build them. But as for if you're always telling the child, oh, you're a loser, oh, you can't do anything right, these thoughts, sometimes they'll sink in the heart and shaitan, he will play with a person. And then that will have an effect on him and he'll believe that. Until he comes like this. Oh, I can't do anything right. Oh, you'll never, you'll never be good. Oh, oh, you'll never be righteous. Oh, you're just foul and filthy. All you think about is evil. You can't do anything right. You can't establish the prayer. You're so lazy. Like this, a person, if he hears this over and over and over, he's affected by that. And those who are weak and those who have weak companions and the likes like this, this could truly affect the person until he believes that. And then he'll act like that. And then he'll act like that. He won't make effort to correct himself. He'll believe, I'm a loser. I, I, I can't do anything good. I, I, I'm not. I'm not good enough. I'm just. And then he'll want. Maybe he'll leave off praying. Maybe he'll leave off Islam. But even that, you know, he'll give up hope. He'll give up hope. He'll lose hope in the mercy of Allah. Lose hope, and in, in, in his, uh, he'll lose confidence in, in the fact that he could repent and do good and the likes like this. So all of this is a foul way. All of this is a foul way. That's from that meaning. For who ahlakahum? Then he's the one who destroyed them. And meaning he has, he has belittled them and he has talked bad to them until the extent that they gave up hope. They gave up hope. So this is not allowed. This is not allowed. Even whenever a person is advising the people in the life like this, maybe sometimes we see in our society, especially in America, that the majority of the society no doubt is misguided. But this is because we live uh, in the lands of misguidance, in the lands of disbelief. And the majority of the people are disbelievers. But still there's good here and there's khayr here. And the sunnah is being spread here. And the tawheed is established here. Walillah alhamd. So even then he will, a person, he'll mention that. He will not make... The general blanket statement, everyone is misguided. And then the people have despair and they, have, uh, they give up hope. Rather, he might mention these affairs any for a point, but that the, at the same time, he'll also remind them that the khayr remains, the goodness remains, the people of sunnah remain, the tawheed is established, alhamdulillah. There's still khayr in the ummah, there's still goodness in the ummah, there's still knowledge being spread, there's, people, there's, still, there's still people who fear Allah, even if they're few. There's still people who obey the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and establish his sunnah in their homes and in their life. Even if they're few, alhamdulillah, the, the deen is established and the khayr is still being spread in the ummah. So he will not uh, make the blanket statement in this manner like this, encompassing everybody and uh, in turn praising himself and raising himself and putting down and putting down the others and putting down the others. Uh, uh, Al-Hafidh al nawawi he mentioned this narration uh, in, uh, in uh, Riyadh al-Salihin. In Riyadh al-Salihin, in the chapter of prohibition of transgressing and being proud, being, having pride and arrogance. But he mentioned here, he says, هذا النهيو لمن قال ذلك عجبا بنفسه وتصاغرا للناس وارتفاعا عليهم فهذا هو الحرام. So he says uh, that uh, the prohibition here with regards to this statement, mankind has been destroyed, all of them are misguided, everyone is lost. The likes like this, this is with regards to the one who said that while he's praising himself, he's amazed with himself, or he, and he's belittling the others. He's amazed with himself, and he's belittling the others and putting them down, and raising himself 
above others and lowering the rest of mankind. This one here who has this intention and he says it in this manner, this is haram and not allowed. This is haram and not allowed. He says, وَأَمَّا مَنْ قَالَهُ لِمَا يَرَى فِي النَّاسِ مِنْ نَقْسٍ فِي أَمْرِ دِينِهِمْ وَقَالَهُ تَحَزُّنًا عَلَيْهِمْ وَعَلَى الدِّينِ فَلَا بَأْسَ بِهِ He said, as for the one who said the likes of this statement, the people are misguided, many of, much of mankind is lost, so on and so forth like this. As for the one who says it, uh, whenever he's looking at, the, looking at the reality of mankind, looking at the reality of society, and he sees the great deficiency that is coming from the people and the deficiency in the religion, and he says this out of grief and sorrow, out of grief and sorrow of the state of the Ummah, for example, to look at the Ummah and to see how many of the youth uh, are preoccupied with that which is not beneficial or lost or misguided and falling into the ideology of the Khawarij, then a person, yani, he thinks about these affairs and he will be sad. He will be sad. So if he said it in this manner like this, not praising himself, but looking at the society and, and then being sad about the state of the Ummah and the deficiency of the establishment of the religion and the likes like this, then, and then looking on his self and realizing his own deficiency even more, then this is allowed and permissible. Then this is allowed and permissible. So the difference between the two is the way that one looks at it and the attention that he has. So if he's trying to say this and nobody is any good, everybody is misguided, there's no good left, meaning like looking down at the people and praising himself, meaning except me and my friends, with some of the people that have this, they don't say it with their tongue, but with their, you know, with the statements on their tongue, but with the statements you know, that they make that lead to this. And likewise, their manners indicate that this is what is intended. This is not allowed. This is what is intended. And this means that that person here, he'll be from the worst of them. And if, the, if mankind is destroyed, the one who looks at them like this with the eye of belittlement, with the eye of belittlement, and that he is better than them in the likes like this, then he is the worst of them. But as for the one who is sincere, and he sees that the prohibitions are being perpetrated with no care and that the sacred rights of Islam are being violated with no concern and the Muslims have not, uh, are not doing the, the rights properly and then he has sadness because of this, then this is allowed and Allah knows best. So, uh, and now he mentions, he says, هَكَذَا فَصَّرُهُ الْأُولَمَاءِ وَفَصَّلُهُ وَمِمَّنْ قَالَهُ مِنْ عَلَى إِمَّةِ عَلَى عَلَامِ مَالِكُ بِنُ أَنَسْ وَالْخَطَّابِ وَالْحُمَيْدِ وَآخَرُونَ uh, he says, and this is how the, the scholars have interpreted this narration. And they have mentioned the details with regards to that. And from the great scholars who mentioned this understanding is Malik ibn Anas. Yani al-Imam Malik. And likewise al-Khattabi wal-Humaydi rahimahumallahu jami'an. So this is the case here. This is leading up to the next chapter, the prohibition of fakhr. There are prohibition of pride and arrogance and looking down upon others and believing a person he's better than them. But even the, that a person, he's better than them. So the author, he says now, Babu al-Fakhr, the chapter with regards to al-Fakhr. Al-Fakhr, it is yani, whenever a person, he will look at others and he will look at himself and then he will believe that he's better than them. For whatever the case may be, some, some, some of it is very foolish. And an indication of, of the ignorance of an individual, somebody who maybe he will look at somebody, he'll be like, I'm taller than him. I'm taller than him. Like this, and he'll be little than because he's, I'm taller than him. So my hair is longer than his. Or, 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 or even the, 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 the things like this. This is Khal Fakhar. This is Khal Fakhar. And then, or he will say, I got more money than him. I got more cars than him. My house is bigger than his. I memorize more Quran than him. I memorize more hadith than this is Khal Fakhar. Al Iftikhar. Al Iftikhar, when a person, he will look at the other people and look at himself, and then he will count the good the traits that he has over them. He will, oh, he's got, oh, I got this and I have this. And I do this and I do that. And I have this and I have this. Oh, you think you got that? Well, I have that and that. Like this. And this is in actuality uh, an imitation of, of Iblis. An imitation of, of Iblis. And this is why the author began with the statement. He says, Allah, ta'ala, in the statement of Allah the Most High, Qala ana khayrun minhu. Qala ana Khairun minhu. He said, I am better than him. He said, I am better than him. Who said that? Iblis. He said, What prohibited you from prostrating before him whenever I ordered you? What did Iblis say? Khairun minhu. I'm better than him. I'm better than him. So this is uh, the way of the devil. Brother, the, 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 the head of devils. Iblis. I'm better than him. I'm better than him because of this and because of that. I'm better than him because of this and because of that. So this is from that fakhr. And the people of knowledge, they mention, even if it's true, 
Like for example, somebody will say, uh, for example, uh, any, uh, I got more cars than him, and he does. And he does. My house is bigger than his, and it is. Like this, I have more children than him, and, and, and he does. My children have better jobs than him, and he does. We have more degrees than you, <laughs> and they do. And the, like, and the likes like this, and it's true. This is called fakhar. This is called fakhar. This is called pride. This is the pride that is impermissible. As for if he was a lie, he said that it's not true. That's called belgyu. That's called belgyu. The narration is going to come. This is called trans the oppression and, and, and transgressing the, the limits. And the issue here is that kibr and fakhar and kibr, they're very similar. Arrogance and pride. But the kibr, what does it carry a person to? To do? It, it carries him to perform al fakhar and to perform al belgyu. The one, al belgyu yani zulm. So the person who is, he's got arrogance in his heart, then he'll be proud over others, and he will boast over others, and he will brag over others. That's what the kibr carries him to do. And they think that he's better than them. It's called aristitara, likewise. Aristitara, when somebody is trying to be taller, but really what it means is pride and arrogance. And he, likewise, it has the same meaning. So then he would do that. And likewise, the one who has that arrogance and pride in his, in his heart, he will not bow down for nobody. And he will not su submit to nobody. And he will not follow nobody. And he, in, in truth or in falsehood. And he, 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 he's got arrogance. He's got pride. He'll buck up. Somebody tells him, fear Allah. He'll become arrogant. He'll become arrogant. It'll cause him to, 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 to transgress the limits. That's the case of that type of person. So this is the chapter. He said, I'm better than him. I'm better than him. Question. Uh, pay attention. Yeah. Is a Muslim better than a Kafir? Yeah. Yeah. Is a Sunni better than a Bidi? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Salafi better than a Khwari? Yeah. Uh -huh. but, but, but how do we understand this then? So we, he won't, we, won't, we won't look at Ahl al-Bidi and be like, I'm better than him. Huh? Huh? Are you better than a kafir? Ah, no doubt. No doubt. Ah. Ah, the mushkila, the problem is he says it's praising himself, glorifying himself, raising himself, belittling others like it's a favor from him. Like it's a favor from him. La, it's a favor from Allah. It's a blessing from Allah. So a believer, no doubt, a Muslim, he's better than a kafir. A Sunni, he's better than an innovator. The person upon the sunnah holding fast with the manhaj al salaf inwardly and outwardly in creed and statement and deed, he's better than those people who are not doing that. The one who is obedient to Allah is better than the one who is disobedient from the believers. Al-mu'minul qawwi khayrun wa ahabu ilallah. Men al-mu'min al-da'if. The strong believer is better and more beloved to Allah than the weak one. Wa fiqul in khayr. And all of them they have good. But the point is now a believer, he will realize the favor of Allah upon him. He'll, he'll realize if he sees people disobeying Allah Azza wa Jal, falling into, into misguidance, leaving off the prayer, and he's the first in line. He's the first in line. If that carries him to be like, huh, look at those idiots, look at those people, look at, to belittle them, this is that fakhr, this is that kibr. He himself has been de deceived. He's falling under the previous statement for Allah. Ahlakuhum. And he, he could wipe out all of his deeds and he, in, that, in that manner. But what a believer would do if he's sincere in his faith, if he sees others, lesser than him in their knowledge or their understanding or their actions of obedience or their following of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and their lives like this, then this will humble them. They will, they will look at all of these people in society, for example, that are misguided, not even Muslim, and he will thank Allah and praise Allah. And he knows that it's the favor of Allah that he was chosen from them to be guided. And that if he's not careful, Allah can strip that guidance from him and make them just like them or even worse. Or even worse. That's why al-rasikhuna fil ilm, what do they say? رَبَّنَا لَا تُزِّقُ لُهْبَنْهَا بَعْدِ هَدَيْتَنَا وَهَبْ لَنَا مِنْ لَنُكَ رَحْمَةً إِنَّكَ أَنْتُ رَحْمَةً O oh, our Lord, do not misguide us after you have guided us. Do not misguide us after you, do not lead us astray after guiding us. This is, this, this is the dua of those who are firmly grounded in knowledge. Knowledge of Tawheed. Because they know that, it, that the guidance is in the hands of Allah. It's in the hands of Allah. So the, the more the guidance comes in the heart and the more one is sincere, the more one is humble, the more one is obedient to Allah, this will make him more submissive to Allah. He will be more humble for, before Allah. And this is the way of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his teachings likewise. Whenever we see somebody who is tried with the calamity, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us what to say. 
We, didn't, we wouldn't see somebody, for example, try with alcohol or somebody try with smoking. For example, sometimes we see the likes of these affairs, maybe in Ramadan. In Ramadan, the brothers is hastening to break his fast on a date and some water like the Sunnah of the Prophet. You find a brother breaking his fast on a cigarette. Some people, they might mock him and make it, mimic him or belittle him or laugh at him and the likes like this. And this is not the way of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rather, the way of Prophet Muhammad is to be humble and to thank Allah. And to say, Alhamdulillah, alladhi aafani mimam tilahu bih wa faddalani ala kathirin mimam khalaqat al-ghirin. He said, all praise and thanks to Allah is the one who has saved me from what he tried him with. Who has saved me from what he tried him with. And, and Allah has favored me over much of his creation in a great manner. And because uh, it's Allah who tried him with that. And if a person, he's not careful, maybe he'll be tried with that likewise. And many times people who belittle others for certain, or for specific things, it will, be a, it will be a punishment for them that they'll be tried by those things. That they'll be tried by those things or their family members will be tried by those things as a punishment. So this goes back to controlling the tongue and checking the tongue. But the point here now is to not be arrogant. No doubt a believer is better than a disbeliever. No doubt uh, the righteous is better than the wicked. The obedient are better than the sinners. No doubt about that. But this, this here carries them to be humble. Carries them to be thankful. Carries them to fear to fall into that way and to be like them. So it carries them to be more submissive and to work harder and to, and to show thanks. So this is the case here. We understand this? This is a, uh, this is a very important point. So uh, Iblis, what did he say? And this, and this is what he thought. This is what he thought. But uh, he was wrong. He was wrong. Actually, Adam is much better than Iblis. And uh, even the wisdom that he mentioned behind that, or he thought, and it because he's created from fire. You created me from fire and you created it from clay. But in reality, fire is not better than clay because fire destroys and it's light and it's reckless. And clay is strong and it remains and you can build with it. And you can build with it. So there's many aspects of why clay, clay is more beneficial than than fire. So even he was wrong about that. So even he was wrong about that. So that will be considered بغيون, بغى عليه. So the author, he says, Rahimahullah and Ayyad ibn Himar رضي الله عنه مرفوعة إن الله تعالى أوحى إلي أن تواضعوا حتى لا يفخر أحد على أحد ولا يبغي أحد على أحد رواه مسلم The author, he mentioned the narration of Iyad ibn Himar رضي الله عنه that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said indeed Allah, he has revealed to me إن الله تعالى أوحى إلي indeed Allah, he has revealed to me أن تواضعوا that you should be humble so that one of you will not be arrogant and pride and, bo and, bo and boastful towards the other. And that one of you will not transgress and violate the rights uh, of the other. Uh, of the other. It's narrated by Ali Imam Muslim. So again, this is the indication here. And he's the opposite of fakhr and the opposite of, uh, of transgressing the rights of others is to be humble. Atawadu'a. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam كان متواضيا بل إمام المتواضعين He was the leaders of the humble sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And first and foremost humbleness it means to be humble before Allah and to be humble before the commands of Allah and to be humble in the application of the obligations that Allah has put upon the people and likewise in avoiding the prohibitions this is where humbleness any first and foremost to be humble before Allah to submit to him in humbleness and humility and to to comply and to abide and to submit to his commandments fulfilling the obligations and avoiding the prohibitions fulfilling the obligations hoping for the reward and for, and, for, and avoiding the prohibitions fearing the punishment this is this is tawadu this is humbleness and likewise to be humble to the slaves of Allah to be humble towards the slaves of Allah by not transgressing their rights and violating the limits that Allah has given them. The, the, not trans, transgressing the limits. Not transgressing the limits and violating the, violating the rights that Allah has given them. And, and not to belittle them or to look down upon them or, 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 or the likes like this, but rather to be nice to them, to be kind to them, to hope to bring good to them, to hope to benefit them, to not oppress them or take their rights. This is what it means to be humble to, to the people, to give the rights that Allah has given them. To give them the rights that Allah has given them and to hope good for them. And to hope good for them. So the one who has kibr, it will carry him to do the opposite. It will carry him to think that he's better than others. And to look down on the people. And to belittle them. And to say, Yo, he has that, well I have this and I have this. Well you did that, well I did this and I did this. Like this. It can be in the worldly affairs and it can be in the religious affairs. What he has to be like, it can be with knowledge. It can be with books. It's a kathur. 
But Kutub, the people of Nahr, as I mentioned, somebody will say, oh, he's got a lot of books. I got more books. Oh, you got this many shelves. I got that many shelves. I got, you, I, you memorize this. I memorize that. A lot like this. And some people, they are overcome with this. What do you have to what do you have to Oh, you know what I have Oh, I know this. I know fire. I know. And the Arabic language, some of the students are trying like this likewise. Subhanallah. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a foul affair. A believer has to avoid this issue. Whatever knowledge we have, it's a favor from Allah and a blessing from Allah. Whatever good we have, it's a favor from Allah and a blessing from Allah. To show thanks to that is to not, uh, is to, from showing thanks to that is to realize that it's from Allah and not from yourself. So if you realize that it's from Allah, then you will not think that you're better than others. Rather, you will know that it's a favor from Allah, not from a favor from your own bounty. Not because you deserve it, not because you work hard for it, not, not, not because this is something that, that you got coming. And the light sight is left from the sweat of your head or because you tried so hard. It's a blessing from Allah, a favor from Allah. So therefore, we said, Alhamdulillah. And if we see those who are lesser or lower, then again, we said, Alhamdulillah. Allah didn't try me with that. Allah saved me from that. Allah, Allah didn't put me in that situation. I seek refuge with Allah from being in that circumstance. And the light sight is, and you show thanks. But you don't become arrogant and proud. This is from the prohibitions. This is rather from, from the major sins. So the author, he says, now, an Abi Malik and an Ash'ari, radiyallahu anhu. And also, uh, connected by, by Muslim from the hadith of Abi Malik and Ash'ari, radiyallahu anhu. Qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Arba'un fi ummati min amr al-jahiliyya, la yatrukuna hunna. الفخر بالأحساب وطعن في في الأنساب والاستسقاء بالنجوم والنياحة على الميت. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said four affairs from my ummah that will remain. Four affairs from my four affairs in my ummah that's from the issues of al jahiliyyah from the times of jahiliyyah from the manners of jahiliyyah Four affairs will remain in my ummah from the from the manners or the the ways of al jahiliyyah the people, they will not leave them. And not every, not all of the Ummah again, but some of the Ummah. These are issues from the affairs of Jahiliyyah that some people from the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they, they, they will carry them along with them. And they will fall into them. Here he's mentioning four affairs Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The first one, Al-Fakhru bin Ahsab. To be proud because of a person's rank and a person's status and a person's any feats that he has done and that his family members have done. And this is called al-ahsab, or al hasab that a person, he, his, his forefathers, they did this and they did that, and his tribe, they did this and they did that, and, this, and his grandpa did this and did that, and, and he'll brag about that. And he'll, and, he'll, and he'll brag about that, or I did this and I did that, and I, and I worked this and I worked that, or my forefathers, I did this and they did that, and they'll brag about these affairs like this. This is from the affairs of Jahiliyyah. And likewise, to find fault with the lineage of others, to, bel to, to belittle people's lineages. Also, this is from Jahiliyyah. What is this? And to believe that the rain uh, will come because of, of, the, of the stars. And to seek the rain any from the stars and the lights like this. And to cry and to wail, uh, to cry out loud and to wail and the lights like this over, over the dead. The, uh, the, uh, the Prophet وسلم, said, he says, and the woman who makes the the niyaha, the, the niyaha again is the wailing, the wailing and the crying at the time of calamity and musiba and the loss of a loved one. They'll, they'll cry out loud and and call on the the dead. Uh, or, or the deceased or, or call for destruction or make dua against their self and the likes like this and they will make a scene at that time this woman who does this the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he says if she did not repent before she dies then she will be resurrected on the day of resurrection with a, a garment from Qatiran Qatiran with the garment of Qatiran Qatiran is a, like a tar or some of the people of knowledge mentioned it's like a sap that comes from a particular tree a, a sap or it's like a tar that comes from a particular plant or a tree and it's, and it's got heat with it and also she will have a dir'un min jarab dir is the female garment the female thobe min jarab jarab is scabies and if those type of disease that will make them itch and this will be her punishment so this is a threat and indication that that affair there is from the major sins the fact that it's from the affairs of jahiliya likewise this is an indication of that it's a foul way that it's a foul way. 
So this is not allowed. After this, the author, he says, وَرَوَى uh, وَحَسَنَهُ And also has been narrated by a tirmidhi and has declared it to be Hassan. Rahimahullah, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لَيَنْتَهِيَنَّ أَقْوَامٌ يَفْتَخِرُونَ بِآبَائِهِمْ أَلَّذِينَ مَاتُوا إِنَّمَا هُمْ فَحْمُ جَهَنَّمَ أَوْ لَيَكُونُنَّ أَهْوَنَ عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنَ الْجِعْلَانِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ أَذْهَبَ عَنْكُمْ عُبِّيَةَ الْجَاهِلِيَّةَ وَفَخْرَهَا بِالْآبَاءِ إِنَّمَا هُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ تَقِي أَوْ فَاجِرٌ شَقِي النَّاسُ مِنْ آدَمْ وَآدَمْ خُلِقَ مِنْ تُرَابٍ خُلِقَ مِنْ تُرَابٍ uh, The author says عُبِّيَةَ تَشْدِيدِ بِتَشْدِيدِ الْبَاءِ وَكَسْرِهَا الْفَخْرُ وَالْكِبْرُ الْفَخْرُ وَالْكِبْرُ So this narration is narrated by a Tirmidhi. The author, he didn't mention, but it's from the narration of Abi Hurairah radiallahu anhu. Radiallahu anhu. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, لَيَنْتَهِيَنَّ أَقْوَامٌ يَفْتَخِرُونَ بِآبَائِهِمْ عَلَذِينَ مَاتُوا That indeed, people who, who brag and boast about their fathers, about their forefathers who have died, they're going to desist from that. They're going to stop from that. And he bragging about their forefathers who have died. Uh, Allah knows best what is intended here. Those forefathers who died, yani upon disbelief, bragging and boasting, like, Bragging and boasting about those forefathers, what they have done. They did this, and my tribesmen did that, and, and, and the, 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 my grandfathers, they established it. This grabbing, bragging and boasting about what the, the feats that the forefathers have done. Yani, and they died upon disbelief. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, if they do not stop doing that, then they are going to be cold for the hellfire. Or else they are going to be more lowly with Allah than the Ja'lan. The Ja'lan. You know the Ja'lan? The Ja'lan is it's a little beetle. Al uh Hashra. -huh. Like in uh, this particular beetle, they call it the, the dung beetle in English. Oh, the dung beetle. Stop. It's a beetle that uh Akramakum Allah it uh, lives on or in and by feces. It's oh. called it's called the Ja'lan and this is the plural. In Arabic it's called the Ju'al. Al Ju'al. It's a famous bug, and uh, it's known. They strike examples with this in the Arabic language, that this is uh, the sun, that it will be used as an example for the lowliest and the worst of, of people or the worst of situations. The Ju'al. It's a it's a dung beetle, and this particular beetle is known that it will go to any the person or to the animal when it likes like this, and it will wait by the animal or the individual, any of the, the, the place it's going to get the feces from, either on it or by it. And as soon as it comes, it will roll up the feces into a ball, and then it will roll away with it. And they'll fight each other for it. So the one that gets it, he'll roll it up quickly and try to leave, or else another one will come and steal it from him. And some of them, they'll live in it. And, they, and this is what they live by, and they eat it. And some of the people of knowledge, they mentioned stories about this, that if uh, this particular bug, he smells the... The, the tlib, <laughs> if he smells the, the good scent, he'll die. Oh, wow. If he smells the perfume, he'll die. Wow. And, it, but, and it's like from the, the lowliest and most despicable of insects, because this is how it lives, literally. You will see it. It's called a dung beetle. You type it in, you can, you can look in the Google, and he, he'll roll up the feces, akramakum Allah, into a ball, and he'll store it. And he'll live on it and eat it. Sometimes they live in it, and they like like this. Literally, they'll go, and they'll find the animal that they're hoping to get it from, and they'll wait there. And they'll wait for it, and whenever it comes, they take it. And they roll it up, and then they run off with it. What do you have to be like? So here the Prophet Sallallahu Wasallam, he's saying these people like this, either they're going to stop boasting and bragging about their, their, their ancestors who died upon disbelief, or else they're going to be, uh, or else they're going to be cold for the hellfire, or else they're going to be low, more lowly with Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala than this animal here. Min al -jialan. Yani, and actually the wording in uh, At-Tirmidhi is أَهْوَنْ عَلَى اللَّهِ مِنَ الْجُعَلِ مِنَ الْجُعَلِ أَلَّذِي يُدَّهْدِهُ الْخِرَاءَ بِأَنْفِهِ أَلَّذِي يُدَّهْدِهُ يَنِي يُدَّهْرِجُ الْخِرَاءَ بِأَنْفِهِ The who is going to be more lowly with Allah Azza wa Jal than the, be than the dumb beetle that rolls the feces with his, with his nose. That rolls the feces with his nose. And this is what is mentioned. And this is the actual wording of the hadith in Tirmidhi. That he'll be lower with Allah than the, the dung beetle that rose the feces with his nose. And then uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, In Allah Adhaba Ankum. In Allah Adhaba Ankum Ubiyata Ajahiriya. That indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has removed from you. Azala Ankum. Uh, the, the, the pride and the arrogance uh, of the days of ignorance. 
and boasting and bragging uh, because of, of the forefathers. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, إِنَّ مَا هُوَ مُؤْمِنٌ أَوْ فَاجِرٌ That the reality is the people are like this. He's either going to be a righteous believer or he's going to be a miserable fajr, a miserable, a wicked and evil person. النَّاسُ مِنْ آدَمُ وَآدَمُ خُلِقَ مِنْ تَرَابِ All of mankind is from Adam and Adam he was created from from dirt, many from clay. Uh, so this is the case. Allah Azza wa Jalla He clarified this in His book. Inna akramakum inda Allahi atqakum. That the most noble of you with Allah is the one who is the most pious. So the one who is white, or the one who is black, or the one who is Arab or non-Arab, or the one who is from this tribe or from that tribe, this will not raise him whatsoever with Allah alone. This right here will not raise him. What raises a person with Allah is piety. If he has along with that some good lineage, if he has along with that forefathers who were noble and righteous and had good feats and the likes like this, this is light upon light. But that would not benefit without taqwa, without piety, without piety. So rather a person, this is how he's raised. This is how he's raised. Maybe a person, he'll have a, a, a great lineage from the best of tribes, but he is from the lowliest of the people in his deen. Then he will be from the lowest of the people with Allah Azza wa Jal. And that tribe will not raise him. And that lineage will not raise him. And maybe a person, he'll be from the lowest of the tribes or the worst lineage. Maybe he'll be any from a cutoff lineage and the likes like this. But then uh, his faith will raise him. But then he'll be sincere and truthful in his faith. And this is a means to be raised above, above the others. Above the others by having sincere and true faith. And he, so here we see that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is... Uh, Warning from this affair, bragging, bragging and boasting about yeah, any of the feats uh, and the uh, issues that uh, the forefathers have done. The forefathers have done and they died upon disbelief. And they died upon dis disbelief. Any of those people who have died upon disbelief, there's no greater loss or failure. There's nothing worse than that, dying upon disbelief. What do you have to So somebody who died upon that, then they're, 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 that's, that's, that's the end of their story. That's, they're finished. There could be no greater disgrace than that and in this life. Because what comes in the hereafter is even more disgraceful and more severe. What do you have to be that? What do you have to be that? So nothing that they perform from goodness will help them or will aid them. So there's no need to praise them. It's, it's not even beneficial to praise them knowing they died upon disbelief. What do you have to So the Prophet is saying that the one who continues to do that, either he's going to be in the hellfire for this and he cold in the hellfire and punished for that way. Or else he's going to be considered low, more lower with Allah Azza wa Jal than, uh, than this dung beetle. Than this dung beetle. Meaning the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he resembled these people, the people who boast about their fathers who died upon disbelief. And he, 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 he compared them to this dung beetle. Uh, he compared them to this dung beetle. And uh, their fathers that they're boasting about, and the likes like this, is, is like the dung that they're rolling. It's like the dung that they're rolling. And the fact that they are uh, bragging about that, that's the act of rolling. So here are the people that brag about their forefathers that died upon disbelief. They're like the dung beetle. And, they're, and, they're, and their forefathers, they're like this, the, the dung. Huh? Yeah. And the rolling of that is the bragging that they're doing. It's the bragging that they're doing. This is the example that is drawn in, in this narration. Wallahu al-mustan. After this, the author, he mentioned, Rahimahullah ta'ala, babu ta'ni fil ansab. The chapter with regards to finding fault and speaking bad about the lineage of the people. About the lineage of the people. And he's finding fault with the lineage and talking bad about uh, the forefathers and the, the tribes that a person came from or the lineage that he came from and the likes like this. Uh, this is what this chapter is with regards to. We have seen that this is from the affairs of Jahiliyyah. And this is impermissible and not allowed. So the author, he says, <laughs> The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned there are two traits. اثنتاني يعني خصلتين Two traits. Two, two traits. صفتيني Two traits that some of the people have, that is considered disbelief. It's considered kufr. What is intended here by kufr? Yani is, uh, is kufr dun kufr. Yani meaning it's considered a type of disbelief or stemming from disbelief, what's considered not showing thanks and fulfilling the rights of faith. And he, meaning not, not meaning that it's disbelief that would take one out of the religion. So he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, to find fault with, with, the, with, the, with the lineage. وَالنِّيَحَةُ عَلَى الْمَيِّتِ And to wail and to cry over the deceased. Over the deceased. 
So the, the, the issue here is for this, for this chapter to find fault with regards to the lineage. Yani atta'an, fi'l ansab. You need to talk bad about the lineage to find fault with it. And it happens in two ways. One is to talk bad about the, the, the lineage and say, oh, he's from this tribe or that tribe. And then to belittle, to belittle him because of his tribe. To belittle him, belittle him because of his ancestors. To belittle him because of his lineage. He's from this, oh, his forefathers is this and that. Or his tribe is this and that. Or his people is like this and that. And to talk bad about them. This is considered a ta'an fil ansab. But also there's another aspect that people of not as they mentioned to be in, to, to have doubt. And to say, oh, that's not his father. Oh, he's not from them. And to deny his tribe. To, de- to, de- to, 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 to deny his lineage. And the lights like this. And to cause doubts about that. This is also considered a ta'an fil ansab. And to say, oh he, oh, he thinks he's from tribe so-and-so. He's not from that tribe. Or he thinks his ancestors are so and so and so. He's not. That's not his ancestors. Like this, I need to find fault with the the person's lineage. It occurs in these two manners. In any case, this here is any from the major sins. After that, the author he says, "Babu The chapter with regards to the one who claimed that lineage that is not for him, and he claimed a lineage falsely. He ascribed himself to another lineage that is not from his lineage. So the author, he says, وَلَهُمَا uh, and Sa'id. يعني سعد بن أبي وقاص رضي الله عنه مرفوعة من ادعى إلى غير أبيه وهو يعلم أنه غير أبيه فالجنة عليه حرام That whoever claimed, uh, يعني what is intended here, من انتسبة يعني whoever ascribed himself to other than his father, يعني from his lineage, and he knows that it's not his father, then verily the paradise is, is haram for him or impermissible. The verily the jannah is haram and impermissible for him. Again, an indication that this is a major sin. Mm-hmm. But, and what is intended by this is this is from the, the narrations of uh, Min Nasus al Wa'id, from the, from the narrations with regards, or from the text with regards to the threat of the punishment. And it does not mean that he will never enter paradise. And if he was a believer, if he was a believer and uh, he knew that this was haram but he did it anyways, then he's under the threat of Allah. If he died upon that, billah, then he will be under the will of Allah. If Allah he wills, he will punish him. And if Allah wills, he will enter him into a paradise and pardon him in the beginning. But what is intended, Yani and Allah knows best, he will not enter paradise, meaning with the first of those who enter. Or he will not enter in honor and respect without any punishment or reckoning. Yani, but the reality is, Yani from the creed of Ahl Sunnah, he's under the will of Allah. This type of individual here. So this narration is understood in the light of all of the narrations and all of the texts that have come with regards to the threat of the punishment of the fire for, for a Muslim, for a Muslim who dies upon that. And the same understanding is applied to all of them. The same general understanding is applied to all of the likes of, of these texts. So in the times of Jahiliyyah, they did not have a problem with that. The one a person, he would adopt a child. He would, he would take a child and adopt a child. And then he would give it his lineage. And, and, and then the, the child would take on that lineage. And the likes like this. And they didn't have a problem with that. But then yani, the revelation came and uh, the law had come and this is forbidden. This is, uh, this, uh, this is forbidden. Allah, he says, Ud'uhum li'aba'ihim. Call them by way of their father. And he ascribed them to their fathers. This is more just with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the case. And there are many uh, foul affairs that come about by this. By ascribing a child to someone who's not his father. And the, the ascription that he will take his lineage. That he will take his lineage. That he will be the son. That will be so and so, the son of so and so. Considered from his lineage and he's not from his lineage. Mm-hmm. We understand this? There are many uh, ills that come from this. And from that is the denial uh, of those who have the right to the inheritance. And then allowing others there who do not deserve the inheritance. And this is mixing this affair up. And likewise, mi- mixing the lineage and the chains up. And also making it permissible for him to see and to be in the company of those who is not permissible for him. And then uh, also forbidding him from uh, seeing or being in the company of those who are permissible for him. And he's changing this affair up entirely. There are many, many ills that come from this. There's individuals that he's not allowed to see. By taking this lineage, now he's in the company of them. Now he's in the company of them. There's people that he is not allowed to marry. And, and then by, 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 by changing the lineage, now he's allowed to marry them. And the likes are changing the lineage. So this has, there are, there are many rulings that come from this. And this is from the beauty of Al-Islam and the completion of the religion. And from the, spe- the specific traits of the Ummah of Muhammad. And the rights and the legislation and laws that are related to the lineage. That are related to the lineage. This is something that Islam has great care and concern for. And many detailed laws and limits that are set with regards to the preservation of the lineage. 
and rulings that come from that and benefits that come from that for the people who have rights to that lineage, who have rights to that lineage. So by changing this in this manner like this, this corrupts this whole law and this whole system and, and, and it violates and prohibits many people from their rights. And then also it brings many facet uh, from that from that likewise. So it's, prohib it's prohibited, whether it's haram, whether it's from the major sins. Huh? Because he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Fal Jannatu Alaihi, Haram. So this indication is a major sin. This will not be said about something except it's a major sin. Likewise, the author, he says, Do not turn away from your fathers. Do not turn away from your fathers. Meaning turn away from their lineage and deny the lineage and the likes like this. But whoever turned away from his father, uh, and he, then he, verily this is disbelief. Meaning considered a type of disbelief. Meaning it's a major sin. Meaning it's a major sin. So to, to, to turn away from one's father entirely and to leave off his lineage. Entirely this is not allowed in a major sin. Rather he must keep his lineage. His lineage cannot be changed. The lineage cannot be changed because of the mafasid that we have mentioned before and the rights likewise. So the author he says, وَلَهُمَا عَنْ عَلِي مَرْفُوعًا رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ مَنْ إِدَّعَا إِلَى غَيْرِ أَبِيهِ وَأَوْ إِنْتَمَا إِلَى غَيْرِ مَوَالِيهِ فَعَلَيْهِ لَانَةُ اللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِ وَالْمَلَائِكَتِ وَنَاسِ أَجْمَعِينَ لَا يَكْبَلُ اللَّهُ مِنْهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ صَرْفًا وَلَا عَدْلًا And also has been collected by Bukhari and Muslim from the Hadith Ali. رضي الله عنه that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said whoever ascribed يعني, in his lineage to other than his father or he associated himself to other than those who had freed him and if he was a slave and this tribe freed him and then he ascribed himself to another tribe then may the curse of Allah and the angels of mankind all be upon this, this individual mm -hmm. Allah will not accept from him on the day of uh, 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 on the day of resurrection sarfan wala adla any sarfan he will not accept from him any action or any deed uh, any obligation nor any uh, non-obligatory action. Yani, this is again a threat with regards to that affair. Uh,